Hi there! Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. We are episode 212. I'm Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. I'm coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia and today is October 6th, 2021. Welcome! Tonight we are going to be doing a pinwheel tower card. I know many of you have seen these. It's all the craze, right, of the fun fold cards, but I just had to make one for myself. So I'm going to share that with you tonight. Let me say hello to a few of you folks who are watching live. Hi, Myrtle, Linda, Dabberdu. Thanks for sharing. Cindy, Carol Ann, Ava, thanks for sharing. Hi, Carolina, Dawn, Laura and Linda. Howdy. Yay. Hi, Bernay. You're here. Alicia, Teresa, oh my gosh, you guys are going through so, so quickly, and I realized I totally forgot to queue up um, Prize Patrol. Let me do that really quickly. I was doing so good, y'all. It was early, and I told my husband, I'm like, I never beat you. <laughs> Let me get this really quick. Prize Patrol, start collecting comments. We'll get that teed up here. Oh, goodness. I knew it was, it was too good to be true that I was ready. All right, share. We'll get that ready to go. Okay, awesome. Well, again, we're gonna be doing the tower, pinwheel tower card and I'm mine is, is sized to be an A2, so it'll fit in our medium envelopes. I'm gonna tell you a couple of housekeeping items. It is a new month. I've got a new host code this month and some really cool free gifts for orders of $50 or more. The Amaryllis of Bloom stamp set, which is a host exclusive set, or the Soft Pastels assortment, or the Silver and Clear Epoxy Essentials. Please use the host code on orders with me under $150. If your order is $150 or more, don't use the host code, but you'll still be eligible to choose a free gift from me this month. And let's see, if you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like complimentary copies of our current catalogs, you can submit a catalog request. I didn't do that right. It's blocking out my face. <laughs> I downloaded it wrong. Um, Thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. I will fix that for next week. Um, let's see. The clearance rack refresh today, and oh my goodness, are the deals amazing. They are discounts up to 60% off. All the items are while supplies last. I haven't checked recently to see how much of it has sold out, but some amaz amazing projects or products from the past annual catalog. There's some great fall items, Christmas items, so don't forget to check that out. Try to get your order up to $50 so you can pick that free gift for the month of October. I have a little bit of show and tell for you, and then we'll jump right into the project. So let me flip my camera here. I've got pictures from the kids that they chose to show you. This is Lily. I think this was all folded up in her backpack, but is a masked princess that she drew. <laughs> I love the little lime green dress there. So that's Lily's drawing. And then Nolan drew me a rainbow and these little V's are birds. And he drew me some hearts. So gotta love that. Really cute. I love how his um, he writes his name perfectly mirror image backwards. <laughs> so there is that from the kids. Let me show you tonight's pinwheel tower card. Again, this is an A2 card. We are using the Happy Holidays, Happy Holidays bundle. And Izzy has come to say hello. Um, Izzy the family kitty. I love this bundle because it's a punch bundle. This is a border punch, the Holly border punch. We're gonna use both of these on tonight's card. But this is just a great classic Christmas stamp set. We're using a few of the sentiments in the pinwheel tower card today. And I'll show you how to use that Holly border punch, which I believe, I don't know how many episodes ago, I was gonna show how to use it and then I totally forgot. So we'll get to see that tonight. So let me show you, this is the front of the card. What's really fun about these pinwheel tower cards is that you can change each of the panels to your desire. There's so many different options. So we're using that holly border punch here. I added a little strip of cherry cobbler. Clean and simple, kind of letting the designer series paper do the talking. And then let's flip to the next. I love letting the designer series paper take the show here. Christmas blessings to you and yours. I put that sentiment in vertical. Here's the next panel, a little bit of a holly holly there, and I'm gonna switch that out. Those little berries were super tedious to add. I used my take your pick tool, but we're gonna use the red rhinestone gems on today's uh, version. And then the last section, this is a panel for you to write your note to the recipient. So how cool is that? Now this is the fun part. 
Oh my goodness. We, um, I had a wonderful four day crafting retreat this weekend. We went up to Lake Hartwell in Livonia, Georgia. There were seven of us and we did lots of eating, lots of laugh, lots of laughing and lot of, lots of crafting. So we actually made two pinwheel tower cards, the five by seven version. And, um, I fell in love with it and I just sat there for a long time, just going like this back and forth. The mechanism is so cool. So I'm going to show you how to make this. It's really easy and the measurements are easy as well. I do have another pinwheel tower card I was working on, but I didn't want to tease you with it because the um, whimsy designer series paper is currently not orderable. Yes, this will fit in an envelope, Michelle. Thank you for asking that. Let me show you. I size this to be sure to fit in our medium envelopes. Look at that. Now, tons of different versions out there. Lots of demonstrators have shared this card. You can do a bunch of different options here. Many have done that center um, tower part in designer series paper to reduce the bulk. I'm going to show you that you can do it with cardstock tonight. And we're actually only going to be... Um, Instead of having, well, I'll show you, okay? <laughs> I, I will explain as I go. Let me get my pieces and parts here. This project is gonna post to my blog on Friday's blog post. I will have a shortened video tutorial. No need for a template, because this is really straightforward here. But let's start with our Sahara Sand uh, card base here. So I have one piece that measures four and a quarter by five and a half. So that is a quarter sheet of cardstock. And then I have three pieces that measure four and a quarter by two and three quarters. You can get, let's see, if I'm doing the math here, this is going to be one half. You can get not quite two out of one sheet of eight and a half by 11, but you can definitely get three out of two sheets with, I think, a little bit left over. But these are great measurements. So again, four and a quarter, five and a half then three pieces that are four and a quarter by two and three quarters. And those are literally just half of this panel here. Okay. So let's start with the larger piece. And I'm going to bring out the simply scored here. We are going to score this piece at two and three quarters, three and a half, four and a quarter, and five. That's it. That's the only scoring we have to do. So two and three quarters, three and a half, four and a quarter, and five. I'm going to bring in some tear and tape here. We're going to do this now. I'm going to line that up right along that last score line that we did. That's that five inch score line. Let me bring this up to the camera to show you. So just put it right up to the score line there. This is a little half inch section. Each of these are three quarters of an inch. And then I'm gonna come in and just miter cut slightly on that little half inch section. That just gives us a nicer finish there. We don't have any cardstock corners hanging over the edge. And since I had my tear and tape on there, they're sticking to my scissors. All right, so now we're gonna fold and burnish on all the score lines. And that burnishing now is pressing down the backing to the tear and tape. So it'll make it easier to get that backing off. So you'll kind of see this is like folded in half now. Okay. Basically half has no score lines. The other half has score lines every three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and take the backing off the tear and tape. And again, whatever designer series paper you use, um, you know, pick and choose your cardstock patterns. So I'm going to fold on the first score line and the third score line. So one, skip one, then three, right? So folding on the first and the third, and I am literally just going to fold those flat. That's using our score lines to square this up. I'm just going to kind of fold back and forth, and then you'll see that that's a perfect square to create that tower. Now the remaining three panels will be the three remaining sides of our pinwheel here. So I am going to, you want to just pay attention to the direction here. So I've got this first section kind of facing me and I'm going to fold this flat. So you see a score line and then a folded edge. And I like to use liquid glue here because it gives me time to slide the cardstock into place. So I'm going to put liquid glue right along this narrow three quarters of an inch section. I'm going to take my next panel and I'm going again in the same direction of this panel. And I want to go right 
up to the edge, not completely to the edge, okay? I'm about a hair from that folded, whoops, let me get this tacked down a little bit and then I'll bring it closer to the camera. I want it to be just up to that edge, not exactly on top of it, because otherwise you're gonna have a little bit of a problem of the free movement of the pinwheel. So go ahead and press that into place. It does not become too thick, Barbara, as far as I can tell. Um, and weight-wise, it shouldn't be over an ounce. I think you should be okay with, um, with this, because I don't think, if I fold this, I don't think that that's too thick for the machine. It's pretty thin there. All right, so we've got one panel down. Now I'm just gonna shift it over again, okay? Kind of following along the lines of the center tower. So we started with this one, then we glued this one down, then I'm gonna shift it over a score line. Same thing, put liquid glue along that three quarter inch section. Bringing this panel, again, going in the same direction here, lining that up just to the edge without going over, leaving about, I don't know, just a sliver of that corner. Show you that again, not quite to the edge, okay? And then we're gonna do our last one, again, shift it over a score line, and then we've got this 3 quarter inch section. Liquid glue, it really goes together very easily. You just gotta make sure you've got the pinwheel going in the right direction, starting with that first pinwheel, what would you call it? The, the blade of the pinwheel? I don't even know if that's what it's called. But again, we're gonna line that just before that fold line and press into place. Liquid glue lets you kind of slide that right where you want it. And then I kind of like to go this, do this a few times to sort of break down those paper fibers and get that going in both directions. So cool. All right, now, now we get to have fun with our panels here. I tried to put these in order of um, how they're gonna go together. So let's see if that stays put. All right, so let me give you measurements ahead of time for each of these panels. So then you can pick and choose when you try this card yourself. The narrower panels, you're gonna want four of them. Those should measure one and three quarters by four. Okay, one and three quarters by four. You want four of those panels. Then you also want four panels that measure two and a half by four sorry, two and a half by four, okay? One and three quarters by four, two and a half by four, okay? And those measurements work really well with six by six or 12 by 12, that, those four inch marks or those four inch measurements. So I've got my first one here. This is gonna be the front of the card. Again, two and a half by four. I'm just gonna take liquid glue and we're gonna work our way around this pinwheel tower card tonight. Um, I lots of practice, Brene. I, um, I, I don't know. I try to not squeeze. The trick is to not squeeze your glue bottle really hard. And I, it looks like I'm putting on a lot of glue, but it's a very thin line. That might be why I don't get sticky. I do occasionally. I just rub my fingers together to get off that stickiness. All right. So you have about an eighth of an inch now. The next panel we're gonna do is, this is Evening Evergreen, one and three quarters by four, and we're gonna use the awesome Holly Border Punch, okay? Now, I want you to pay attention to a few things on here. You can see the silver paint on the bottom part as well as on the top, okay? This part just kind of shows us what that punch is going to look like, but this part on the bottom is gonna help us line up when we need to punch multiple times. So. I'm gonna feed this in, and for this card, I wanted to line up, I don't know if you can be able to see that. I've got the edge, oh, designer, thank you. This is the Tidings of Christmas, is that right? Yes, the Tidings of Christmas designer series paper. Thank you, I forgot to mention that. So I am lining up the Evening Evergreen right to the edge where that metal piece is there. That's kind of my starting point, making sure that that's pushed back all the way to the back and I'm gonna punch. Let me show you what that looks like. Beautiful. Now, I am going to, let's get that mess out of here. 
feed this back in, but what I'm going to do is slide this until, so there's only two holly bunches that have been punched out. That first one, so the one on the right, we want to line up with the silver paint. Hopefully you can see that. The silver paint on this border punch. See how that silver paint lines up? It's great to see that. And then once that's lined up, you can come in and punch. And then we've got our three bunches of holly berries. Holly leaves and berries, okay? Now, I'm going to save two of these holly leaves. We're going to use that on a different panel of this card. Feel free to save the rest for the great for shaker cards and other things like that. Let's get that tossed. So that is the holly border punch. Now this bundle is on page 27 of the mini catalog. It's a great price, $39.50. That's one of the things I love about our punch bundles. So you get the stamp set, the Happy Holidays stamp set, and the Holly Border Punch. Okay, great samples here on page 27. Let's get this out of here. All right. I'm also going to make sure that I want my leaves going up to the top. So I just flipped my cardstock over there. And I've got a strip of cherry cobbler. This is quarter inch by four inch. So real narrow strip. How are we doing? Good. And I'm just going to sort of fill in the space here because our um, cardstock's a little wider than the punch punches out. So it's not centered, but that little strip of cherry cobbler looks really nice there. So then I'm just going to gingerly apply liquid glue to the back here, just kind of going in the little nooks and crannies with liquid glue here. And then we're going to apply this to this panel. And again, you'll have about an eighth of an inch of the Sahara sand peeking through. How cute is that? We're going to come in and stamp in just a minute. So let's move on to the next pair of panels. And I just went through the Tidings of Christmas designer series paper and just picked complementary patterns together. So I'm kind of alternating the evening evergreen with cherry cobbler here. And I love the mixture of patterns with the stripes and the flowers. So we're just going to work our way around. This is a wonderful way to use up scraps and to show multiple sides and patterns of our designer series paper. You probably couldn't make a hundred of these for Christmas, but you could certainly make this for some special recipients. It is worth all the work for sure. And I love that it fits in an A2 envelope. So these are just complementary front and back sides. All right, so those are those two. Love those together. Now let's flip to the next one. This does remind me of the never ending card as well. So we've got these two complementary patterns. Again, all of these panels are the same size. The narrower is one and three quarters by four, and the wider is two and a half by four. Love that little herringbone pattern there. And that's just the back side of the pattern we put on the front of the card. And when I say front, it's just whatever I decide to be the front. That's the great thing about this card is you can make any of them. Let's go that way, be the front panel. All right, now the last two panels, I'm actually going to do some stamping here. Let's get this first one, again, one and three quarters by four. All right, and then this one, this designer series paper, Kathleen, is six by six. Again, two and a half by four, but I'm going to stamp on this first. So let's start to do some stamping. I grabbed my Cherry Cobbler and Evening Evergreen Stampin' Write markers. I haven't done this in so long. 
And I realize I'm putting my, <laughs> my basic white envelope on my inked stamp. So making a mess over here. All right. So I like to color the holly berries in first. I'm just taking my cherry cobbler marker and just brushing on the berries on the stamp. This is great for red rubber stamps. Get those done. And then we'll come in and I'm using the brush tip, kind of putting it at a little more than a 45 degree angle, but uh, just brushing right on those stamp images. And this does not have to be perfect. Gives it a great two color look though. I love direct marker to stamp. Just don't do this as often. Maybe, I don't know about you guys if you've gotten out of the habit of doing this. And then the trick is to just huff on your stamp just to re-moisten the ink. And then I'm going to put that right there in the lower corner. And there you have your two-tone stamp. I love that in coordinating colors. All right, so that was the stamp and write markers. Let's go ahead and glue this panel down. Um, Kathleen, I've never tried to refill them. There are um, folks who have tried to do that. You need to be, you can try it with the re-inkers. I don't think they're intended to be refilled, but I know that people have had success. I've got my glue bottles all jammed up right now. Um, but I know that you, I think you can pull the marker tips out and put some re-inker in there, but I haven't tried it myself personally. See, I did get sticky this time, y'all. <laughs> and then we'll put this down here. This is your panel to write your note to the recipient. Okay. So now let's do a little bit more stamping here. I have got two pieces of basic white. These measure two and a half by one. And then I have one piece that measures three quarters by four. Okay. So I'm bringing in my cherry cobbler ink pad. Let me show you on the stamp set. We are going to be stamping Noel. Christmas blessings to you and yours. And then wishing your family health and happiness throughout the coming year. So we'll start with Noel here. And that's going to go on one of these one inch by two and a half inch pieces. It's a little bit of a tight fit, or it seems like it's a tight fit, but it's actually a perfect fit there. So there's Noel. The Christmas blessings to you and yours, that's going to go on the vertical piece, but I'll turn it horizontal to do the stamping. Lily, my daughter, got braces today, so she's adjusting to that. Um, she was going to pick red bands because that's her favorite color because it was Grandma Pixie's favorite color, but at the last minute she chose blue because she thought they were so pretty. And then this will be a perfect fit right here. There we go. All right. Um, Maria, I have never gotten in the habit of putting the sticker on the stamp. So long story short, before the stickers were super sticky in Georgia, the humidity, the stickers just didn't stick. And because I was out of the habit, I just never did it. And maybe some of it is laziness on my part, but it actually, for me, it doesn't, they don't help me <laughs> adding the stickers. So I leave the stickers off and when I resell my stamp sets, um, the stickers go with it. And so the recipient can add the stickers if they like to, but yeah, I've only done it to one or two stamp sets. And then I was like, eh, not worth the trouble. I want to stamp. <laughs> so we're going to glue this first one on the first panel. So Noel. Nice pop of white there with a bold sentiment. The next one we'll do our vertical sentiment. A 
I just think that looks so great with the cherry cobbler pattern behind it. Then the next one will do the wishing your family health and happiness throughout the coming year. I love how all these sentiments go together. Now I felt like this panel needed a little something more. So let's go ahead and add a pair of holly leaves that came out from our holly border punch. They're very subtle because they're being glued to an evening evergreen background. The stamp set is in the mini catalog, Becky, on page 27 of the mini catalog. All right, so we just kind of put those by each other. And I, for this one, am going to take the real red or the red rhinestone gems and we'll just grab a trio of those to create our berries so we don't have to mess with the um, the little tiny paper circles that come from the punch. So we'll do that. Get a little bit of pretty bling going on there. There we go. All right, so what have I missed? What have I forgotten? I think we've done all the panels. I'm looking at my sample. All right, so that is actually a fairly simple, clean, easy t pinwheel tower card. We had some fun with the Holly Border Punch and the Happy Holidays stamp set. So this is the Happy Holidays bundle. So Noel, Christmas blessings to you and yours. Wishing your family health and happiness throughout the year with a little bit of red bling there. And then our spot to write a note. And again, you can play around with all the different um, patterns, papers, occasions, you name it. I love this tower, pinwheel tower card and all the endless options. I could do this all day. And then of course, this is super fun to watch as well. Um, Pamela, great question. That is listed on my favorites page. This is actually an Avery vinyl pocket size to fit passports, but I just cut down. I actually have a whole blog post about that. So Pamela, if you want to feel free to shoot me an email at julie at thepaperpixie.com, or you can search on my website, thepaperpixie.com for my adhesive backed embellishment storage, but I just cut the backing from the designer series paper down to four by six and adhere um the adhesive backed embellishments they all come in different sizes and that drove me nuts so i'm going to show you i've got a whole bunch of them and now they are all uniform in size this um case is from stamp and storage but it's since been retired this size but they um it makes it really easy to look through all the adhesive backed embellishments and then they are all the right size and uniform so that is the tower pinwheel card, pinwheel tower card. I keep saying that the wrong way. I wanted to show you, this was the one that I was working on, but I didn't want to tease you. That's that beautiful whimsy and wonder designer series paper that is currently unorderable, but it is estimated to be back in stock next week. I hope, I hope, I hope. But look at how fun these patterns are with that beautiful iridescent foil. I just kind of got started with this one. I'll probably add some trees and things. So you may see this on a future blog post. But again, that's with basic white as the base. Same dimensions of, with everything. It will fit in a medium envelope. So there is the pinwheel tower card, the A2 size. So let's jump into prize patrol. Let me get ready for that, which I wasn't ready before. I will be giving away two of the Little Delights stamp sets. And here's how you participate for those of you that are new. I know many of you have probably seen the hashtag prize patrol popping up in the comments. So here's what you do, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, this is for my live viewers only. So if you're watching on the replay, I'm sorry. You wanna leave hashtag prize patrol in the comments. Um, hashtag prize patrol, no spaces, make sure you spell it correctly. And I will choose two lucky winners to go home with those stamp sets and a handmade card for my stash. I got my little post-it notes out. Um, while you guys are coming on in with that, let me share my, let me switch my camera, share my screen here if my mouse will work. There we go. We're gonna let those entries come on in. So really quickly, check out the clearance rack. I have it linked in the description of this video. 
great, great deals on some amazing products that have since retired. Also, my free gift for the month, the Am Amaryllis Abloom stamp set or the soft pastels or the clear and silver epoxy essentials. I can't remember the name of them, but those are free gifts you get to choose with any order of, with orders of $50 or more this month with me. So let's go ahead and choose prize patrol winner number one. I'm gonna click draw. Love seeing your names. Yay, Joanne Rattray, congratulations. Just writing your name down. Congratulations, Joanne. I got two post-it notes there. All right, let's pick winner number two. Stay tuned, Joanne. I will tell you how to claim your prize patrol in just a moment. Yay, Mary Harris, congratulations. All right, let me write this down. All right, Mary and Joanne, congratulations. To claim your prize patrol, you want to visit thepaperpixie.com slash prize patrol. So Joanne is from Canada? Oh, no worries. We got you. I'll, I'll, We'll chit chat with that. <laughs> um, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, let's see, I am going to, let me take this off the screen, stop the share. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I will be live with you again next Wednesday for episode 213. And I don't know what we're doing yet next week, but anyways, I'm excited. Looking forward to seeing you next Wednesday. Again, check out the clearance rack. Check out my host code for the month and the free gifts as well. I appreciate you all being here. Thank you to those of you that will watch this on the replay. Have a wonderful and blessed week, and I will see you next Wednesday. Take care. Bye.